Let's now talk about the design of experiment section. To know a little bit more about design of experiments in injection molding, I highly suggest that you visit my channel on YouTube where I have got where I've got a complete video on design of experiments in injection molding. It's about 41 minutes, but it will be well worth listening to it. Assuming that you all know the background of design of experiments for injection molding, I will now go into how to use the software for DOEs. In the DOE section, select on new session, put in the name of the session. So let's just call it as tutorial. Click on create. You'll be presented with a screen where you can pick up the factors via a drop down menu. Let's say you want to study cooling time and you want to study pack pressure. And let's say it's an amorphous material. And so you want to pick up the melt temperature. Let's pick up these three factors. Click on the next. You will now be presented with the screen where you're going to put in all the units in the highs and lows. So units for cooling time will be seconds. Let's say we are running a PSI pounds per square inch. So let's just call it plastic PSI. So PPSI. Let's say melt temperature is in degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, it will depend upon which country you are and how what you're used to. You can use any units you want. The high value and the low values, these numbers should come from the six step study. For example, let's just consider the pack and hold pressures. You know that below a pressure of 8000 PSI, you've got sink marks or short shots, and you know above 12,000 PSI, you end up getting, let's say, flash or pin push. So those would be the highs and lows. Highs and lows should always be defined based on the cosmetic process window that was determined in the six step study. Same thing with the cooling time. Let's say that below eight seconds, you got pin push. And therefore now my minimum cooling time would be eight seconds. Depending upon the part thickness, I typically will add about six seconds to eight seconds. Let's say it's a part which is about 80 thousandths thick or 100 thousandths thick, which is about two millimeters to two and a half millimeters. In that case, I will say the low is eight and the high is 14. Melt temperature, consider that I'm running ABS and therefore the high melt temperature, depending upon, of course, the grade, I'm going to say is 480 and on the low end, it is 420. The precision value. So remember, there's always a help menu over here. So if you click on this, it's going to tell you what the precision value is. In practical molding, the precision number would be the least amount of change one would make in that variable to see a difference in the part quality. For example, making a 10 PSI change, this is hydraulic PSI, a 10 PSI change is not going to make a difference in the part. However, maybe 25 PSI is going to make a difference. So I would put the hydraulic pressure for the pack and hold pressures, in this case, holding pressure would be 25 PSI. Cooling time would be about one second. Mold temperatures or melt temperatures would be about five seconds. So these are like the typical numbers that I would put in there. So in this case, let's say that the cooling time, the precision value is one. Packing pressure would be, let's say it's about 250 plastic PSI. If you consider the intensification ratio of 10, then let's say it's about 25 PSI is in hydraulics and melt temperature. Let's say it's about five. You can, of course, put in whatever values you want, but those are the typical numbers that I use. Click on the next button. And now here is the responses. So you can put in any amount of responses you want. So let's just say length. The nominal is 5.125 plus tolerance is 0 0.010. This is inches. The minus tolerance, let's say, is 0 0.008. And let's say I want to take a sample size of three. Please remember, this is not statistical analysis. And so you do not want to measure 30 parts here. You're only going to do this for DOEs. And so three samples is more than sufficient. This was a family mold. And therefore, it's asking to which part does this dimension belong to? So I'm going to say it belongs to part ABC. 
That way now you can put as many dimensions you want. Let's say you're, you're looking at a diameter and the diameter is 2.456. The tolerances are 0 0.005, 0 0.005. And let's say samples of three and let's say that belong to the XYZ part. Remember there's a family mode. So I've got a left handle and a right handle. So in this case, I'm calling it ABC and XYZ. And then you simply click on worksheet. And when you click on worksheet, it is going to give you these eight experiments that you need to run the parts at, measure those dimensions, and simply enter all those dimensions here. You can come in here and export this whole worksheet into Excel. So by exporting it to Excel, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to take this Excel sheet, take a printout, or even email it to your quality department. They can fill out all that information. They can send it back to you. And once they send it back to you, you can simply take this information, copy it, and paste it into the software out here, and then do the analysis. I'll go ahead and open up an experiment that was done previously, so you can see how the results are analyzed. Let's open this. This was an irrigation product a pretty large irrigation product, so it's almost about 15 inches. We ended up doing eight experiments. This is hydraulic PSI. We varied the melt temperature, the cooling time, and the holding pressure. In this case, the pack and the hold were only one pressures, and so we called it as holding pressures. In reality, it's actually pack and hold pressures. This was the data that we measured. You can see here, for example, for experiment number one, for the diameter of cavity five, the three samples that were measured were 0 0.5716, 0 0.5719, and 0 0.5723. So this way, this is all the data is over here. Once you have all this data, you simply click on Analysis. When you click on Analysis, you're going to open up all these tabs here, and all the analysis is now done. The first tab here is all the experimental data. The next one is the experimental information all the highs, lows, the tolerances, and so on. And the next tab after that is the sensitivity and outliers tab. This is a very important tab, and you must always look at this first before you look at any of the analysis over here. That's because always, like in all software, any mistakes that are made will give you wrong results. As they say, garbage in, garbage out. And so we always look to see if there are any outliers in your data. So you can see here, the three samples, experiment number two, this is 15.042, 15.055, 15.045. I have made this on purpose and it's not very clear, but you can see that there is a 15.055, which is an outlier compared to 15.045, 15.042. These are the right numbers but you can see that this one is now skewing all the results. So always look for outliers. I've seen so many times where companies by mistake or the operators by mistake will put in 15.505, something like that, and then they end up getting wrong results and all the data now looks really bad because again, it was not measured or input correctly into the software. Look at all the outliers here and also look for a trend. You can see very clearly that this is experiment one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This dimension here, you can see there's a certain trend going on up and down, up and down. And you can see in the pressures out here also you've got up and down, up and down, which clearly says that maybe it's a holding pressure that's gonna make the biggest difference in this dimension. You can select any dimension this way. So let's just, for example, click on two. You can see that the diameter two, this is the data for diameter two. Again, there are no outliers here. Of course, this is completely out of spec. This is the dimension for all your eight experiments. This is the lower spec limit. This is the upper spec limit. It's completely out of specification. The DOE will also tell you how to fix this dimension. Let's talk about that in the next few tabs. So this is your sensitivity and outliers tab. Then you go to the tornado chart. The tornado chart is a chart which looks like a tornado. You can Google it and find this out. You can, it looks like a tornado, and so it's called a tornado chart. It simply tells you what is the most important factor for this given dimension. Or in other words, 
what is the factor that's going to make the biggest impact on this dimension? We have studied melt temperature, cooling time, and holding pressure. Of this, it tells you C, which is holding pressure, is the one that's going to make the biggest impact on this dimension. This is the zero line. Anything on the right-hand side of the zero line and is blue is basically a direct relationship. That means if I increase the holding pressure, this dimension will increase. Whereas anything on the left-hand side of the zero is basically telling you that you have got an inverse relationship. That means if I increase A, the dimension will decrease, will go down. So increasing holding pressure increases the dimension, increasing the melt temperature decreases the dimension. These are the interactions. And you can see out here B, which is the cooling time, is all the way at the bottom, which tells you that cooling time does not make any dimension change. If you change the cooling time, nothing is going to happen to the dimension of this part, this particular dimension, this particular cavity. If the cavities are well balanced, then you should have the same snapshot for all the cavities. It also tells you over here, the total dimension change that can be made in this dimension is 0 0.0300 units, which is about 30 thousands of an inch. Or the dimension can be changed from 15.04508 to 15.07508. So this is the total change that can be made in this dimension. Okay, and again, these are the interactions between the factors. You can again select the dimension you want to look at. So let's look at the diameter two. In this case, cooling time is the one that makes the biggest difference. Then C, holding pressure that makes the biggest next difference. There's an interaction going on over here. And again, you know, in this case, A, which is melt temperature, doesn't seem to be making any difference on the dimension of the part. For those of you all who are used to Minitab, you, we have got the same information, which is the main effects plot, which is similar to the tornado chart. And you can also look at the factors and interactions right there. The dimension process window is where you can now plot the dimensions on a graph, also called as contour plots. So since we know from the tornado chart that for the length of the part, it is the holding pressure and the melt temperature that make the biggest difference, we can come to the dimension process windows and now we can plot melt temperature versus the holding pressure. Click on the plot graph and now you get a contour plot. The solid green line that you see here is the nominal value. So if I click on this nominal value, you'll see that the melt temperature is 495 and the holding pressure is 886 and the cooling time is 11.5 seconds. What this tells is that if I set the molding parameters to these numbers here, then I will hit nominal on this particular dimension for this cavity, which is cavity four. Anywhere on this line, I'm going to be hitting the nominal values. If I set my process here, this is the upper spec limit. The solid orange line is the upper spec limit. In this case, 492 and 1058, I'll be at the upper spec limit. Or I come down here, I'll be at the lower spec limit. If I set my process here, 483 and 1142 PSI, I'll be out of spec. So now I can come in here and draw this window. And now I can very confidently tell you if I set my process between 482 and 546 and a holding pressure between 822 and, and 1030 PSI, leaving the cooling time at 11.5 seconds, I'll always be within specifications. And now this becomes the dimensional process window. What we had earlier is the cosmetic process window. This is 800 to 1200 PSI is my cosmetic process window. That means below 800, I've got short shots. Above 1200, I've got flash on the parts or any other defect. So this is my cosmetic process window, but this one here is the dimensional process window. The third factor is always held at the center. You can also change it to low. So I changed it low. Of course, we know from the tornado chart that cooling time does not make a difference in this dimension. And therefore, you can see that the contours are not changing a whole lot. 
they're almost static right there but you can now let's say that i want to run at the fastest cooling time eight seconds what's my dimension process window i can come in and draw my dimension process window and i would select my molding process right in the center of this window that which would be the most robust area and in this case i would select let's say a temperature of 515 degrees and a holding pressure of 950 psi and a cooling time of eight seconds and at those settings i'll have a very robust process for the length of the part and cavity four as we move to different cavities and different dimensions of course now we do have that facility to plot those graphs here too so for example this is cavity four i can click on cavity the next cavity here which is cavity five and you can see unfortunately the process window or the dimension process window is only down in this corner because there's something wrong maybe in the in, in the mold and which we need to now figure out the process window is so small yes can you make one good part absolutely you could probably make 100 good parts here but will you be process capable probably not because the process is going to vary around this point if it varies you're going to go out of spec here or you're going to have short shots so this is a very clear indication that you've got a very small dimensional process window although you've got a nice cosmetic process window unfortunately that's wasted because you're right in the corner of this window here if you look at you can look at multiple dimensions so i can come in here and say okay what's the next dimension this is the, this is the the diameter of the part the contours look completely different in this case because the factors that govern the dimension are different so the contours look different you can enable what's called as a multi-response plot so i want to look at cavity one cavity two together i'll update it and you can see that wherever the green lines are intersecting unfortunately only over here this is the only place i can mold good parts so i can come in here this is the upper spec limit for cavity five and this is the lower spec limit for cavity four and therefore i can only join here it tells me a process is extremely small for both the cavities put together you can also let's say look at other dimensions so i update this and now you can see that for cavity four length and cavity four diameter this is the dimension process window because this is where all the green lines are intersecting and so i can come in here and draw this window and say therefore the most robust area again of this would be somewhere in this window out here so you can also do a multi-response plot by clicking on this moving further it gets even better by looking at the visual and numerical prediction equations so this over here is visually where you can simulate the complete molding process please remember that this is your mold your machine your material and we are doing the analysis so again good data is going to give you good analysis so please make sure that you've got the right amount of resources and the right resources to measure these dimensions correctly what is this tab cavity 4 cavity 5 length lower spec limit nominal upper spec limit it tells me that the black x out here dimension of cavity 4 at a melt temperature of 470 a cooling time of 8 seconds and a holding pressure of 800 psi is 15.0593 inches and for cavity 5 it is 15.0749 inches which of course is out of spec and therefore it's showing it's red i can simulate the process i can start changing the process here and i can see i can increase the pressure and as i increase the pressure look at where the dimensions are increasing right there has gone up i can decrease the melt temperature out there and i can change the cooling time if i want so see the biggest dimension i can make for this part for this length is the stop window out here or i can drop the pressures so let's drop the pressures here and if i drop the pressures all the way down to 800 psi and if i change the melt temperature to the high end because we saw from the tornado chart that the melt temperature increasing melt temperature will decrease the dimension of the part and cooling time has no effect so let's let's leave it there what this shows you is that this blue column is representing the amount of dimensional change you can make based on the molding process so i cannot make a dimension change above and below this column the blue column 
So for example, if you look at this dimension here, which is the diameter two, because this blue column is completely outside the lower spec limit and the upper spec limit, it clearly tells me no matter what I do at the molding machine, I will never be able to bring this in spec just based on process changes. There has to be a change made in the steel dimension and or in the specifications of the product. Changing specifications is almost impossible most of the times and therefore the steel has to be adjusted to meet those specifications. We will of course look at a tab where we can tell you how much steel adjustment has to be made. The other advantage of this is look at the port length. This tells me that the blue column is completely in between the lower spec limit and the upper spec limit. And so if the part is cosmetically acceptable, it has to be dimensionally acceptable also. And this dimension will never go out of spec. So in some cases, you can also eliminate or reduce inspection. Let's say that I've got a 16 cavity mold. And now you're running the 16 cavity mold and all the dimensions are inside over here. There's no need to measure these dimensions. Maybe you need to just measure it once a shift or once a day. And of course, visually always look at the parts and make sure you don't have any short shots and you don't have any flash in the parts. Again, if you've got a good, big cosmetic process window, then you're never going to have those issues. So the port length is good. Diameter two is out. Diameter one, acceptable. You can make good parts. Cavity five is bad, looks like. Cavity four seems to be okay. When I say it's bad, it's right at the edge. So the first thing I would do is, if I have a chance, go and look at what is going on with cavity five. But let us say that something is wrong with cavity five. Now, what do you do with the rest of the data? So in this case, first thing you can come in here and say, let's optimize, give me an optimized molding process. Come to the process optimizer tab, click on the gold spot button. When you click on the gold spot button here, you have got an option to select your cavities and to select the dimensions you want to study. So I'm going to say that I don't care about diameter two. It's always out of spec. The port length is always in spec. Let's not worry about it. Cavity five is bad. So let's eliminate that. Based on what else is remaining, I click on OK. The software will now go and tell you that the most optimum condition is 545 PSI, 15 seconds of cooling and 975 PSI as a holding pressure, which brings it as close as possible to the nominal. I'm using the words as close as possible to the nominal. I'm not saying right at nominal because you're going to be always fighting those dimensions. So it tells you the most optimum process for the dimensions cavities you selected is this. But you might say that 15 seconds is on the high side. I want to run this mode as fast as possible. So let's drop this time all the way down to eight seconds because we know that you can still make good parts at eight seconds. So my preferred process is now 545, 8, and 975 PSI. So having selected the robust process, I will always, by the way, select a center almost closer to the center of the process window for pressures because the pressures are the one that always causes these defects, most of these defects like flash and short shots. So in this case, 975 is good because the low is 800, the high is 1200. So my preferred process is 545, 8, and 975. Now what we need to do is to fix these dimensions here or this dimension here. Maybe there's something wrong with this, the steel in this cavity. So what do you do? You select your molding process, come to the suggested dimension changes out here. And going back to the molding process that we selected, we wanted to run 545, 8, and 975. So you come in here and change this to 545, 8, and 975. Diameter 2, it tells you that you are about 0 0.0138 and 0 0.0141 inches away from the nominal on the higher side. So you're going to take the mold to the tool room and have the tool room adjust or take off about 14 thousands of an inch. And when you do that, the dimension is now going to hit the nominal value. That is the power of design of experiments. You've now got a robust process and at the same time, you have now hit the nominal value. So you can do this in the 
suggested dimension changes tab. The max dimensional acceptance is sometimes you want to just find out where can I run this molding process so that the maximum number of dimensions are acceptable, not necessarily right at nominal or closer to nominal, just within spec. So you click on seek process. Again, I would leave in this case, let's just see if you can leave cavity five out and we deselect cavity two, sorry, diameter two and port length. And let's hit on OK. Now it see it tells me that if I set my processes to 5 degrees Fahrenheit, a cooling time of 15 seconds, a holding pressure of 800 PSI, then dimension that we selected, you can now see that I'm within specification. Please remember being in spec is not the same as being capable. That is process capability, CP, CPK is capable. So this is your max dimensional acceptable tab. Then we can go on to the next tab, which is the confidence rating. So what's a confidence rating is, again, it helps the QC department or the program manager or the QC engineer to decide which are the dimensions that you want, you need to measure, which are the dimensions that you need to measure. So what is blue is the dimension is process sensitive and must be monitored. There is a risk of being out of conditions. Dimension that is in green, that means it is within specifications and you don't have to worry about it because it's always going to be within specification. And if it's red, it tells you clearly that you have to make a change in the steel and or in the specification of the part. But by molding process, it's not possible to be, to be achieved. Target seeker, let's say that you've got a brand new mold and you want to now just have one part and the length is what is important to you in this case. So I'm going to say that I want to look at cavity four and I want to hit nominal for cavity four. What's my molding process? I do seek target. It's going to give me the molding process for that nominal, for that dimension. So we have given this tab because there were some people who said, I just want to hit dimension one part because it's the first run. When we go into production, we're going to go ahead and change that, of course. But what can we do to achieve the specifications for one part? And that's what is the use of this target tab. The next tab is the lowest cooling time tab. Again, in this case, the software will automatically tell you for the dimension that you selected and for the cavities that you selected, what is the molding process at the lowest cooling time. It automatically will take the lowest cooling time into consideration. And let's again say, let's leave cavity five out. Let's leave these dimensions out and let's leave this port lens as it is. And when I click on OK, it's going to tell you the molding process is 515, eight seconds, this is always by default at the lowest number and 525 PSI is going to give you a process where you can make these parts to spec. The next one is ANOVA. When you click on ANOVA, you select a dimension from here and when you click on that, it's going to give you the ANOVA table for that particular dimension. Again, you can cycle through all the dimensions and look at the ANOVA table for each dimension. Print and export, you can export all these reports in any form you want. So go ahead and select the dimensions that you want. I want to look at the tornado charts, the main effects plots, sensitivities, let's say ANOVA. I want to print out the dimension process window. So click, I want to say, I want to print cooling time on the X axis and melt temperature on the Y axis. And in case of the diameter, I want to print out holding pressure and I want to print out versus the hold uh, the cooling time. And I say print, it's going to open up the print menu. And in that print menu, you can now select whatever format you want to select and save this data. So I come in here and if I want to do PDF, I click on PDF, all pages, I click on OK. You come in here and select the name of the file. And when I click on save, is going to go and create a PDF document of this whole report out here. This is how the design of experiments tab is used in Nautilus.